Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. September 23, 2020, the Is It a Deal or Not edition. First up from the BBC, Papa Masada Dayak, who was convicted in Essentia in France last week for corruption and money laundering, has refused to leave Senegal and says they can send special forces to pick me up. He, of course, is the corrupt son of the corrupt father who recently or most recently ran the IAAF as their own personal fiefdom of bribery and corruption. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, if he ever leaves Senegal again, but uh, certainly one of the most corrupt folks around. From the Wall Street Journal Risk and Compliance Journal, Dylan Tokar reporting, he takes a look at compliance programs hitting the refresh with data analytics tools. The slow shift towards data-driven corporate compliance programs has a new accelerant. This, of course, was the 2020 update to the evaluation of corporate compliance programs, which came out in uh, on June 1, the push to incentivize compliance officers to find ways to access financial and operational data and adopt better technologies for screen for risks such as bribery uh, can be enormous. Businesses have long used data to drive decision-making in other areas, but the adoption of analytics tools and compliance has been slow uh, for a lot of reasons. One is budget constraints. Two is uh, cultural hurdles in that compliance officers are largely lawyers with no training in how to use data nor to how to understand it. And then, of course, uh, the siloing of compliance away from all operational issues. So uh, it's good to recognize that uh, the Fourth Estate now sees what the Department of Justice said back in June as a key component of uh, compliance programs going forward. So today's TikTok story, well, it is or it isn't. When is a deal not a deal? Uh, The deal itself appears to be on the ropes. The parties cannot agree on who will control TikTok, although Trump is giving his blessing to a deal that would give non-Chinese investors a majority stake. The uh, TikTok itself says, well, not so fast. We're actually going to own 80 percent. TikTok plans are the bite dance. The owner of TikTok wants to spin it out. Uh, with a watered-down ownership. Uh, Obviously, Washington and Beijing are nowhere near a compromise, and uh, Trump, of course, has uh, painted himself into a corner with his inane statements. Uh, He has blessed this, but as one person said, quote, I wish this were already over. Uh, Negotiations are continuing, but uh, it's not clear when, if ever, a compromise will be reached. And finally, the Trump administration takes a big old dagger and puts it in the heart of the gig economy workers by saying it's going to uh, issue rules which will make it difficult for those to engage in contract work to be classified employees. So uh, obviously, uh, if you're an employee, you get uh, substantially more benefits, you get substantially more protection. But the Trump administration has gone out of its way to screw workers at every opportunity it can do so. So really no surprise here that they would side on behalf of business to take as many employees out of uh, potential employment status so that they would have protections, they would have health insurance, they would have Social Security and everything else. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.